Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sonia and thank you for listening to this message. I have a, a lot of information to give you today. It's a news update and it's very, I would say, prophetic in that it's regards to Turkey. And as my listeners, my followers, many of you are familiar with my content, you know that my opinion regarding the Antichrist Beast Kingdom is that he will arise from the region of Turkey primarily but as a whole, the Turkey, Iraq, Syria region. And for those of you who are not sure how I come to that conclusion, I've done several messages on this before. And it's important that you, I think so anyway, that we read the scriptures and what they have to say about where this entity, this system will arise from. And it's in the scriptures. And I go through that very detailed in my previous messages. This is why I'm focusing on Turkey this morning and what I found is really shocking to me and I want to show it to you. There's several different countries, leaders I'm going to show you today and um, some of the leaders I'm going to discuss with you today is President Trump, the leadership of Pakistan, uh, also within the American sort of governmental political side of things. I'm going to talk about Biden and this news that's just come out regarding Biden and Erdogan and Greece, of course, the situation with Greece, what is happening right now, currently, at this minute in time. So let me turn your attention, perhaps beginning with Greece, what is happening. Do you know they've actually put out an SOS call to Britain they're asking for help you guys and I'm going to be watching the United, King United Kingdom to see what their response will be to this letter of, of plea they're literally begging for intervention for somebody to come to their aid and I pray that Russia will heed the call because Greece really needs help you guys if nobody comes to the aid of Greece, I guarantee you Turkey is going to invade this island. It's going to happen. It might not be a complete invasion, but I guarantee you this is regarding resources. Remember, friends, the Antichrist, his primary sort of expedition that he does in the Middle East is, first of all, resources. He tries to secure that in order to build himself an empire, a kingdom, with many riches, overthrowing many leaders and many other government um, powers. Anyhow, let's read this. This is just, this is current news. In a letter to the editor of the Times, prominent politicians, academics and authors called on the British government to express its clear support to Greece and Cyprus. The 25 British personalities in their letter emphasised that Turkey's refusal to accept the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea is a deliberate attempt to deprive islands, island states of their rights, while pointing out that Turkey, that Erdogan's stance is causing tension in the eastern Mediterranean. The letter also urges NATO member states to condemn Turkey's drilling activities instead of maintaining a policy of equistance. The full letter, sir, we are, we too are deeply concerned by President Erdogan's escalation of rhetoric and threat in the Aegean and Eastern Mediterranean. Erdogan's provocations leading article August 15. Positive developments in energy, you see what I'm saying you guys? energy are an opportunity to build more productive and stable regional relationships but require all parties to abide by international law. Other regional governments have shown their willingness to negotiate within the framework by the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Seas. Anyhow, the Turkish government's refusal, blatant refusal you guys, they're totally ignoring the pleas, they're ignoring pleas for um, cooperation compromise and they're just continuing with their plans the Turkish government's refusal to accept the convention is a stumbling block a deliberate attempt by Ankara to deprive island states and states with island interests of their rights under customary international law Mr. Erdogan's policy is fermenting regional tension 
European governments, including Britain's, must give a clear message of support to states such as Greece and Cyprus that are upholding multilateral rules. And let me read that final passage. Turkey's NATO, NATO allies need to be unequivocal that Ankara's provocations are not acceptable. A policy of equidistance between Turkey and Greece in this matter is inappropriate. The only feasible way to reduce tension and bring about stability is through respect of UNCLOS, that law of the seas, and processes of international law. And it, all these people are signatory to this letter, right? This is desperate times and it's calling for desperate measures for Greece and Cyprus. But I've said in previous messages, these island nations are in great threat of being overrun, invaded by Turkey, Ottoman Suleiman. Now, what else has been going on regarding Turkey? Seriously, can't keep up with what's going on with this nation. Check this out, you guys. Turkey funding surrendered ISIS cadres to radicalize Indian Muslims. This is very recent, the 15th of August. Istanbul, the Turkish government has allocated huge funds to the Turkish intelligence to radicalize Indian Muslims, media reports said. The president of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, reportedly allocated the funds to the body so that the radicalization process could take place with the help of preachers recruited from surrendered ISIS cadres. Now, according to an Indian security report, Turkey has been sponsoring ISIS, and I showed that to you. Remember, friends, I showed you in a previous video the research, the investigation work that was carried out by a university here in the United States proving the links between Turkey directly with ISIS and its affiliates in Syria. <coughs> Sorry. Similar to what Pakistan has been doing with ISKP in Afghanistan. Such proxies have eliminated independent voices on the ground in Pakistan and Afghanistan while at the same time denying their involvement, reports Z Media. Now, this bit here. Oh, I can't believe the commercials in in in the way of this. A lot of these people are worried about Pakistan's involvement with Turkey because this is also current news and I've also prophetically warned about Turkey and Pakistan alike because I was I made a message regarding where Pakistan will have to choose and decide between Saudi Arabia or Turkey and I said it would go and side with Turkey it would run to Turkey for help and this, I believe, is going to be the future formation of the Persian element to the Gog armies. Remember, friends, that Gog, the head of Meshach Dubal, which is Turkish regions, is going to have an alliance of Persia, Libya, Sudan. Persia covers a much wider region than just Iran today. Anyway, Pakistan Prime Minister cozies up to Turkey, army chief to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia basically let him down. He needed money to bail him out of his own economic crisis. Islamabad. While Prime Minister Imran Khan is cozying up to Turkey's Erdogan at the expense of infuriating the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, powerful army chief Kamar Javed Bajwa has rushed to placate Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who, was, who has withheld loans that Pakistan needs for its ailing economy. Sources in Islamabad told IANS that General Bajwa is visiting Riyadh to do the balancing act after Pakistan's recent threats to split the organization of Islamic cooperation and his diplomatic shift toward Erdogan, who nurtures the ambition of replacing Saudi Arabia as the leader of the Sunni Islamic nations. Do you see what I'm saying, you guys? How many times have I been saying this? This is an infighting between Islamic nations among themselves for leadership, power, control, hegemony. It's all, this is their problem. Islam has caused this problem within the Islamic community and they need to deal with it. And this is how they deal with it. There's a lot of backstabbing, treachery and deceit involved. 
there's a fight, you see, who's going to be leading the caliphate, who's going to lead the ummah, because they believe in their end times, the last day, according to them, is when the Mahdi will rule over Islamic nations, and there will be no more boundaries, they will all be united under the United Nations of Islam, like this map, let me see if I can bring the map up, where's this map, not that one, not that one, this one here, this is what they envisioned. Do you remember I showed this to you in a previous message? This is their version of the United States of Islam. Who's going to be the leader? Who's the caliph? Who's the king, right? They're fighting over it. Saudi Arabia is the problem. It's a big thorn in the sides of Iran, Turkey, this region here, who wants to lead it. Iran being Shiite, Turkey being Sunni slash Sufi. And they're wanting to take leadership. Let's go back to the article. Hit by severe economic crisis, Pakistan had borrowed two, 6.2 billion from Saudi Arabia back in 2018. The loan package included provision under which Saudi Arabia granted Pakistan 3.2 billion worth of oil. A year on deferred payments energy resources right however saudi arabia has halted the provision of oil on loan for pakistan after the imran khan government threatened to split the oic over kashmir they're wanting help nobody's taking leadership to help him out for the kashmiri issue nobody does nobody wants to get involved do you blame them the pakistan army has attempted to invade the jammu kashmir four times in the last seven decades decades you guys and has been waging a proxy war against india for the last three decades since august last year when india revoked special status of jay jammu kashmir state and brought it directly under the control of the central government the imran khan government has been seeking support from the 57 member oic the biggest block of islamic countries in the world so they got a concern there regarding what is going to happen between Turkey and Pakistan. Now I've got this map out here because I wanted to remind my Western audience, my listeners here in America, what is the big deal with Turkey? Why is it such a focus? Look at that map and tell me what you think. <coughs> it's located at a crucial geographic location in our world today. In fact, Turkey's Erdogan has said so. He said so in his speeches. I have one speech that he made at the United Nations 74th General Assembly, which was last year in September. From last year, September to this year, this coming September, did you know that Turkey will be heading the United Nations? I mentioned this when it was breaking news. It was out there, it's in my videos. And there's a lot taking place right now, you guys. This year is going to be absolutely crazy. It already is. So this is Turkey, the bridge between the east and the west. Perfect location for the Antichrist. This is the Turkish uh, map. This is how they envision it to be in the future. They want to own all this region here. That's their plan. There goes Greece, there goes Cyprus, under the banner of Islamic Turkey. In fact, here's this article, fan page of defense. This was a few months ago, you guys, and it, it shocked a few people that this happened. This was back in October 2019. So what I'm bringing to your attention is that Turkey has been planning this invasion, taking leadership, Disregarding Greece is all, Greece's autonomy in the region, disregarding Saudi Arabia and just completely trampling down on Syria right now because he wants to remove Bashar al-Assad. But listen to this report. A fan page of Defence Minister Akka posts a map of Turkey that includes parts of Greece and entire Cyprus. That's what the map looked like. It, it was a leak. It leaked on his social media account, right? A fan page of Turkey's defense minister, Hulusi Akar, posted a map of Turkey on his Facebook page. 
How irresponsible, huh? Which included northern Greece and the Greek islands of the Aegean, the entire Cyprus, as well as half of Syria. This is a screenshot from that guy's page. This is what he had in mind, you see. This, I believe, is incredibly prophetic. This is how I envision the Antichrist kingdom, according to the scriptures covering the regions of Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. The Lion, Babylonian region, the Bear, Medo-Persian, and the Leopard, Ancient Greco Empire, revamped. <coughs> That's what that looks like. The Facebook page is understood to be run by Turkish nationalists who posted the map with a message in Turkish Akar saying, we have no eyes on anyone's land. We will only take back what is ours. What do they mean by that? Rewind, go back in history and think of the Ottoman Empire. That is the land they want to reclaim. I say this stuff repetitively on my channel. But I'm saying it again for the sake of the new listeners and my new subscribers that are joining my channel and it's for their benefit I repeat certain themes. Now, it's so sad, isn't it? Forgive me for sighing. I do a lot of sighing, you guys. I'm just so sad. I read this to you regarding the Greece situation. This, for me is not a surprise but it's considered another form of breaking news do you remember friends i spoke to you about it's like i can't believe i say stuff on my videos and shortly after in the next days coming weeks couple of months it's confirmed it's like i read the word of god i pray ask the lord for the holy spirit's interpretation understanding this is why i say the word of god is so more up to date than the news out there I told you that if you would consider for a moment the Muslim Brotherhood as a type for argument's sake, please leave a comment if you remember me saying this, you guys. It would just help to validate my point here. I've told you that if you consider for argument's sake the Muslim Brotherhood as a type of the Antichrist Beast Kingdom, in that it is very similar to the Beast Setup. It's political, ideological and military. The military wing being these guys here, Hamas. Now, what do we have here? Turkey has said to grant citizenship to Hamas. Brass planning attacks from Istanbul. Most members, they've been doing this already. This is just, they are officially giving them citizenship. They've been there for a long time. Most members of 12 member cell already given papers and passports, UK newspaper says, including one who allegedly plotted to kill mayor of Jerusalem. Get used to this alliance, you guys, and don't forget, in the United States of America, okay, this guy here represents the Hamas, right? Hanania, not Hanania, Hanania. We have Muslim Brotherhood already in America. We know that that's true. Care organization is Muslim Brotherhood. They're just covered with a cloak. Civil rights movement cloak, load of nonsense. Turkey's in the process of granting citizenship. These guys are banned everywhere else in the Middle East. How comes he's giving them a platform? Because Turkey is using political Islam. He's moving away from the Sunni Sufi strain of Islam to further his agenda his expansionist agenda. Turkey is in the process of granting citizenship to high-ranking members of terrorist group Hamas living in its territory who are said to be involved in directing terror attacks, one of whom allegedly oversaw a failed plot to assassinate the mayor of Jerusalem, a report has said. That of the 12 senior members of the cell, most... Go away. Most have already been given citizenship. British Daily, the Telegraph reported Thursday. A senior source told the paper that seven have already received citizenship and passports while the other five are in the process of doing so. Some of the cell members are living in Turkey under aliases. In some cases, citizenship has also been granted to the families of the Hamas members. Wow, he's really welcoming them with open arms, giving them a platform. And what do you suppose they're going to be doing there? 
Why was Turkey Z the one so vocal, outspoken regarding the Khashoggi assassination? Because he was the Muslim Brotherhood. They have interests. That this is the front that is going to come against Saudi Arabia. And it's all according to God's plan. Remember what it says in Revelation. That he allows them to be of one mind. That they will give their authority to the beast. This is just the beginning stages of this forming. These are not foot soldiers. <clears throat> but the most senior Hamas operatives outside of Gaza. A senior regional source told the paper. The source said the Hamas members are actively raising funds and directing operatives to carry out attacks in the present day. He added the Turkish government gave in to pressure by Hamas to grant citizenship to his operatives, thereby allowing them to travel more freely, endangering other countries that have listed Hamas as a terror group. One of those who, have, who has apparently received citizenship is Zakaria Najib, who reportedly oversaw a plot to assassinate senior Israeli public figures, including the National Police Commissioner and Likud M.K. Nur Bargat, who at that time was the mayor of Jerusalem. Is there anything else I want to cover here? A Turkish government spokesperson declined to comment to the Telegraph about the report, describing it as a baseless claim against Turkey by foreign government. Talking about baseless claims, now let me show you. Do, do, do, do. This here. <sighs> Six days ago, this was reported. Vox Valley Technical College announced his spokesman has resigned days after his social media comments on Islam, Black Lives Matter, surfaced. He makes this statement on his social media account and the guy loses his job but he's absolutely right i made that video regarding black lives matter connected to the muslim brotherhood in america I made the connection between antifa and pkk in the middle east who were who were arming antifa training them how to fight <clears throat> It's, this whole thing is a nightmare, to be honest. In a statement provided to the post president on Tuesday, FVTC President Susan May said, Chris Josset, manager of media relations, resigned, resigned effective Monday and was relieved of his duties immediately. Why? What happened? That's him. He's going to need to get a new job now. Josart, who had served as a college spokesperson, man for nearly 15 years said Tuesday his attorney advised him not to immediately comment on the matter what was the matter let's get to the point here you go I want to get to the point I want to get to the heart of this thing on Friday just called the Black Lives Matter movement a disgrace in response to an article about two black pro-life activists being arrested outside an abortion clinic. The same day, he commented this. Yes, get rid of the anti-American filth causing cancer to our nation on a post about Minnesota Republican Ilan Omar, who is a Muslim. She's also a Muslim Brotherhood. Responding to a LinkedIn post of an opinion article from the Jerusalem Post, Jossa on Thursday commented, Islam is all over the world infiltrating every nation and Joe Biden wants their beliefs in our already tainted public school curriculum. Earlier last week, he liked a post including a photo of Michael Brown and commented, BLM needs to be eliminated now. Josart's post caught the attention of the nation's largest Muslim civic civil rights and advocacy organization. Who do you think that is? Care. On Tuesday, the Council on American Islamic Relations welcomed Josart's resignation after it raised concerned, concerns about his Islamophobic. You know, they're going to keep bringing that word out, hashing it out every time to silence criticism of Islam about his Islamophobic anti-Black Lives Matter and the other offensive comments online. I'll link the video in the description, the one that I did regarding the care organization of Muslim Brotherhood, how they have said in their own words that they want to make Black Lives Matter their matter. Black Lives Matter their cause.
and they're gonna ride this horse and it's gonna be to our detriment in America because no one seems to be doing anything about it. A little history. This is from the Gulf News. For decades, the Muslim Brotherhood, also known as, also known as the Quran, terrorist organization, <coughs> has succeeded in earning social, political, and some countries' government support. The group labels itself as a charity, goodwill, social care, and human rights supporting organization. The problem with the Muslim Brotherhood is not just with its savage political objectives and the dream of establishing a caliphate, <laughs> but this is a group that believes in an ideology to employ religion for its political motives to gain power. Come in Biden. This is what grabbed my attention first this morning. Turkey <clears throat> takes aim at Biden after old comments on Erdogan resurface. Biden made some comments several months ago, but they've resurfaced and it has infuriated the government in Turkey. <coughs> Turkish politicians are expressing outrage over presumptive US presidential candidate Joe Biden calling for the Turkish president's ouster back in December. Likely because Erdogan is using them to whip up nationalist fervor against the United States. <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry, you guys. The furor over comments by presumptive US Democratic presidential nominee, Joe, in December, in which he called Turkish President Erdogan an autocrat and said he would help his opponents to replace him, show no signs of abating, even though the former vice president made them so long ago. Look what the response of Turkey was. <clears throat> you are no match for this nation. You brazen man, howled the pro-government daily Yeni Safa today. Know your place, warned Yeni Akit, another government mouthpiece. They were taking their cues from other ones, lieutenants. His head of communications, Faretin Alton, said Biden's words reflected an interventionist approach towards Turkey. No one can attack our national will, he fumed. Presidential spokesman Ibrahim Kalin vented via Twitter saying the days of ordering Turkey around are over and that those who dared do so would pay the price. What a threat. That's a threat right there, isn't it? I'm going to bring your attention now. This is all on the theme of Turkey. Our president in 2017 met with Erdogan when he was invited over. I want you to listen to this and just watch. Watch the body language, watch the language that they use here and how I see President Trump, I don't know you guys, but behind the scenes he he's allowing for the rise of the caliphate. Recep Tayyip Erdogan arrived in Washington, D.C. for his meeting with Donald Trump. A first for the two presidents, and a difficult one. Topping the agenda, the war in Syria and the fight against terror groups. We support Turkey in the first fight against terror and terror groups like ISIS and the PKK and ensure they have no safe quarter. Notably, one group not mentioned, the YPG. The U.S. had recently agreed to supply additional and new weapons to the group for the fight against Daesh. 
This move came as a shock to Turkey, as it considers the YPG the Syrian branch of the PKK terror group. It doesn't matter what country supports the YPG. Any support for terror groups are against international agreements. Let it be known that whichever country lends support to the group considers them as a legitimate party and is violating international agreements. However, according to Turkish sources, Washington and Ankara are discussing what Turkey views as essential measures for closer cooperation. The U.S. agrees to increase its efforts on gathering intelligence about PKK operations and shares intelligence with Turkey. The U.S. is giving Turkey assurances that Raqqa is going to be governed by locals and Arabs and not by Kurds or the YPG. Finally, the U.S. will not voice any objections over Turkey's demands to clear the northern Iraqi city of Sinjar of any PKK presence. The U.S. will not object to any of Turkey's demands. Why is that? What does Erdogan have over our president? I would like to know. What, what's this power thing that he has over President Trump? You see, that's, that's very concerning to him and it should be to us all. The extradition of Fethullah Kulan, the man Turkey says was the mastermind of last year's failed coup attempt, was also a topic of discussion. President Erdogan used the meeting at the Oval Office to reiterate Turkey's stance. I have been very frank in communicating our expectations with regards to the FETO terrorist organization and their involvement in the failed coup in Turkey on July the 15th. This was perhaps U.S. President Donald Trump's toughest meeting yet with a foreign leader, an attempt to restore relations with an important NATO ally after they soured under the previous Barack Obama administration. And while no concrete assurances were officially announced to appease Turkey's concerns, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan leaves the White House with the hope that the discussions behind closed doors will help turn the tide. Alijan Ayanlar, TRT World, Washington. Yes, and <clears throat> both of these leaders do have frequent telephone conversations. He has a direct line to our president. A direct line, you guys, and they speak very often, very regular. I had a map here, an ancient map of the Persian Empire, because I wanted to show you that Persia mentioned in the book of Ezekiel, for example, um, Ezekiel 38, where he talks about Persia aligning with Gog. And I wondered why that language was used to describe the region Persia, because Persia was a kingdom and the region was larger than Iran of today. Often we think, yeah, Iran is going to join Turkey, but Persia includes today's Afghanistan, Pakistan, northern regions of where Iran is. It's, it's a lot bigger. So I'm just thinking this is just the beginning stages of us seeing alliances form and our Western leaders are allowing it to happen. Isn't it interesting how certain things have to happen according to the word of God? But when we're seeing them happen, it doesn't look good. It feels like, well, why Why is President Trump allowing this? Why is the UK silent? Why aren't they doing anything? And you have to put it down to this is the will of God. This is what he has purposed. Certain things will have to move into place. You see, all this region here was ancient Persia. Ancient Persia, much larger than what we think. Now, think about Pakistan's cozying up to Turkey here. If there comes this alliance and it's coming, because the word of God says it's coming, you can easily see Pakistan joining the club, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, these thans here, Iran being mainly Persian region here, joining Gog together with Libya and Sudan. That's a massive confederation right there, isn't it? It's huge. It's a big deal. Now, I want to bring your attention to this speech. It's three minutes long, but please pay attention. This was last year in September. And when I was watching, I watched the whole thing. I listened to all the leaders that came up, took their position and gave their speech. They made their appeals because they often have appeals and they share with the world leaders what pressing needs their nations are experiencing and they make an appeal for help or aid or whatever this guy 
took that opportunity to tell the world what his intentions were and he told everybody and nobody did anything about it. This is why I want you to listen to this, it's really important. örgütlerine aynı mesafeden bakan bir anlayışı yerleştirmeden Suriye meselesine kalıcı çözüm bulamayız. Amerika Birleşik Devletleri ile burada bir güvenli bölge oluşturulması konusundaki görüşmelerimiz sürüyor. Niyetimiz ilk etapta 30 kilometre derinliğinde ve 480 kilometre uzunluğunda bir barış koridoru tesis ederek uluslararası Toplumun burada 2 milyon Suriyelinin iskanını sağlamak. Şu görülen bizim sınırımızdır. He's showing everyone his intentions, right? derinliğine olan bölge budur. Şu güvenli bölge ilan edildiğinde bu güvenli bölgeye biz rahatlıkla 1 milyon ila 2 milyon arasında göçmeni mülteciyi yerleştirme şansına sahip. Burada gerek Amerika, gerekse koalisyon güçleri, Rusya, İran hep birlikte el ele vermek suretiyle bu güvenli bölgede bu mültecileri çadır kentlerden çıkartıp konteyner kentlerden çıkartıp buraya yerleştirebiliriz. Bunun adımlarını birlikte atmak lazım. İşte gördüğünüz gibi Aylan bebeği dünya çok çabuk unuttu. Unutmayın ki bir gün ola ki aynı durum sizlerin de başına gelebilir. Bakınız sene 1947 neredeyse burada İsrail yok gibi. Tamamı Filistin. Sene 1947 paylaşım planı var. Ve Filistin küçülüyor, İsrail büyüyor. Geliyorum 1967'ye, 1949'la birlikte. Buyurun, İsrail büyüyor, Filistin küçülüyor. Ve geliyorum bugüne güncel durum şu, artık adeta Filistin yok, neredeyse tamamına yakını İsrail. İsrail doyuyor mu? Hayır doymuyor. İsrail şimdi de kalanını almanın gayreti içerisinde. Peki Birleşmiş Milletler Güvenlik Konseyi'nin Birleşmiş Milletler'in İsrail'le almış olduğu bunca kararlar var. Bu kararlar uygulamaya geçiyor mu? Hayır geçmiyor. Peki o zaman Birleşmiş Milletler ne işe yarıyor? Uluslararası toplumun hala yeterince ilgi göstermediği sorunlardan biri de 72 yıldır çözülemeyen Kashmir ihtilafıdır. And because he mentioned the Kashmiri conflict which is Pakistan and India's conflict, this is why Pakistan has chosen to go to Erdogan for help and Erdogan will be more than happy to help him. But why? Because it furthers his agenda. He wants to be recognized as the caliph of the Islamic world and we in the West are allowing it to happen. Güney Asya'nın istikrarı ve refahı Keşmir meselesinden ayrı düşünülemez. Şu anda Birleşmiş Milletler Güvenlik Konseyi'nin Birleşmiş Milletler'in almış olduğu karara rağmen Keşmir adeta abluka altında ve 8 milyon insan Keşmir'den ne yazık ki dışarı çıkamıyor. Okay, let me pause that before it goes over to the next video. No, I don't want to replay that. Please don't replay, no. Right. This is why I left this page here as the final thing I want to talk to you about. This is at the top of my concern. So September this year, you guys, <clears throat> let me enlarge in this. I have mentioned this before when this was first announced a couple of months ago now, was it over a month now? Over a month, I believe. Yeah, June. Volkan Bozkir elected president of the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly, right? 
when does this begin <coughs> officially I'm sorry it begins in September this year Vulcan Boskid, a veteran diplomat and parliamentarian, was elected as the president of the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly on June 17th. Boskir is the first Turkish national who has become the president of the General Assembly. Boskir has been elected from the Western European and other group in strict compliance of the established principle of geographic geographical rotation and general assembly la la la Boski will take over the presidency from the incumbent the Johnny Mohammed Bande in September when the 75th session will resume this year you guys September the vote at the United Nations General Assembly was emblematic of its time Wearing face masks and practicing physical distancing, ambassadors from the UN member states filed into the iconic but empty General Assembly Hall to cast their ballots. He says, I will put every effort to serve the United Nations members so that the General Assembly continues to carry out its mandate efficiently in the period ahead and take pertinent decisions on global problems and their solutions while promoting multilateralism and international cooperation. What do you think they're going to oversee? That's a... <sighs> Volkan Bozgir was awarded the Order of the Star of Romania and the Order of the Merit of the Italian Republic at the Knight Rank and the 100th anniversary medal of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Azerbaijan. He is married with two children, he speaks fluent English and French. <clears throat> what do they do? The election of the President of the General Assembly of the United Nations and respective 21 Vice President occurs at least three months before the opening of the session over which they are to preside in accordance with Rule 30 of the Rules of Procedure of the General assembly oh my goodness you guys all working towards this and remember friends their primary goal if I can zoom in no I can't <laughs> is Jerusalem I mean you heard him say that yourself right he spoke about his desire to kind of liberate Jerusalem he spoke about Kashmir. He wants to be the savior of the region. Um, the West is just kind of, right, okay, intimidated. I think that this leader has something, it's like a hold, it's spiritual darkness. Anyway, I think I'll end the video there because this is going to take a long time to upload and my internet is already cutting and doing that weird thing again. Every time I do my videos lately, it's been doing this anyway. Thank you. Uh, please share if you can, appreciate it, and I will be back shortly. Thank you.